All right, chip of the day. Uh, today we're going to use a 74HC221 um, because I have a whole bunch of them. <laughs> I don't know where they came from, but I have a bunch of them. Um, so it is a uh, dual uh, multivibrator or monostable multivibrator. So what is a what is a multivibrator? Sounds really weird. So it 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 waits for an edge, and if it sees an edge, it it generates a pulse. Okay. And it generates a pulse of a fixed width. So it just sits around and waits for the pulse. If it sees a pulse, you can set it so it looks for a rising pulse or a rising edge or a negative edge. When it sees that edge, it generates a pulse, always of the same width. And you can't get it to do like a double wide. It, it, it waits. And so it's got a, a hold off circuit into it before it can be triggered again. So it's a non, non retriggerable. Uh, let's see here. It says uh, dual monostable multivibrator with reset external resistor and capacitor sets the it's just a simple RC that sets the width of the pulse once triggered blah 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 blah. So uh, it is a HC series part which is nice. I think it's fairly rare. Um, I think most people would use the 123 or the 121 or something like that but uh, 221. Uh, let's see here. Overriding reset terminate yeah, it has a reset pin on it that can shut the whole thing down. You can have Q or not Q. Outputs are a rising pulse or a falling pulse. Uh, da, 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 da. It has Schmick trigger inputs on B. That's interesting because I've seen some data sheets that show A and B with Schmidt triggers and some that only have the B channel as a Schmidt trigger. So I don't quite understand what's up with that. But uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, Four and a half to five volt operation for HCT parts. The HC parts, of course, are CMOS, so they'll operate from two to six volts. Um, let's see here. So it has a simple block diagram. Okay. It's got a one monostable and two monostable. It's got these two separate circuits. You just put an, a, an RC on it. And you put another RC on it, and those set your time constants. And these run independent of one another. There's a reset pin. There's a, a A input, a not A input, or a plus B input. Uh, they say B is Schmidt trigger, but the other one isn't. Um, and then the Q or not Q. Okay. So, like I said, you can either have a rising edge on B, or you can have a falling edge on not A. All right, and then you get the pulses out. Now, the actual insides of the chip is actually quite complicated. Uh, I'm not going to go through this, but uh, you can see here the B sh has a little Schmidt insignia, and this one does not. Okay. Uh, let's... I'll let you do that on your own. It's pretty weird stuff. Let's look at... Uh, then, to set the pulse width, you just use you use this chart or you can just calculate RC. But here's the pulse width and you just choose a capacitance and then you choose a resistor and then you can operate in here somewhere. So it like kind of likes to be between 2K and 100K. So in my circuit, I'm using a 10K. Um, yeah, so here is a Fairchild part. Dual, re, non-retriggerable, monostable, yeah, okay. Um, all right. Yeah, now on this data sheet, they show B with a Schmidt trigger input and they show A with a Schmidt trigger input. So I don't know if this part is different or they drew it wrong. Um, they also didn't put a little not A on this one. It should be not A, B, not, I don't know. They just call them A and B on this part. So yeah, it's exact same part, but the data sheets read the data sheets read different. Um, let's go ahead and play with one. All right, so I have the uh, two two one in here. I've got a ten k point one microfarad. It's over here. This is the ten k, and this is the point one microfarad timing capacitors. I just have some 1K resistors as pull-ups on the unused pins uh, and the input. So um, let's turn the power on. All right. And then I have a switch here. So 
when I um, press the switch, it should um, it should operate. All right. Um, so I've pushed the button and I've generated a, an input. So this is the input. This is the output. So if we uh, if we zoom in, oops. Let's see. Let's go ahead and put. Um, Let's see horizontal. Let's put the there we go. Now I can zoom in. So um, so here's our step. When I push the push button, it generates a positive signal, and then the monostable outputs a a pulse of a particular width. Right, it's around uh, one millisecond. Okay, about 0.9 milliseconds. Okay, I can just read that right off here. I'm one millisecond per division. And it's about 90% of the way across. So yeah, you can set up measurements and everything, but again, try to do try to do oscilloscopes the old-fashioned way. You you get a feel for it. You don't have to set up things. You'll slow yourself down. If you want to be a real fast engineer at work, you'll press your boss. Just be able to glance at things and say, oh yeah, that's about it's about 0.9 milliseconds. Okay, so um, yeah, let's zoom back out and uh, let's go ahead and set the trigger level in the middle. And then we'll put our uh, place that we're going to trigger over here so we can watch events. Now I'm going to click the button several times. Okay, so uh, I've clicked the button several times and you can see that we have a whole bunch of pulses here. So let's see if they're always on the rising edge. They should always be on the rising edge. So we can zoom. And we can set a particular width of zoom, and then I can move back and forth. Okay, so we'll look at the first event. Uh, so here's the first event. We get a rising edge, we get a pulse. Let's look at the next event. Next event, a rising edge pulse. All right, next event, rising edge pulse. Rising edge pulse. Falling edge pulse. Wait a minute, you said it was supposed to be only on rising edges. Well, let's zoom in a little farther. You can see that we had a bounce, our switch bounced. And so even though it fell, it did have a rising edge on its bounciness. And it saw that rising edge and then it did its one shot thing, right? So. If you give it an edge, it's going to grab it. Um, so make sure you debounce switches. This is one of the reasons you want to debounce switches. Okay, there you go. That was chip of the day at 74HC221.